our Lord. Welcome to Oliver Bible Church Service at Inspiration Center. I especially welcome our online viewers. Thank you so much for joining us today, and I know you will be indeed blessed in this service. Remember that we will be expecting to hear from you, so use any of our social media platforms to ask a question or share your message of your testimony and we will revert to you immediately after service. Right now, can we stand to take the opening prayers? In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We thank you for a day like this. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your loving kindness towards your people. We roll over this service unto you. Holy Spirit, preside over everything that will happen in this service today. Let the name of my Father, our Father, be glorified now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. We've been preaching, taught, teaching on the concept of marriage. Last week, we looked at the purpose of marriage. We are still teaching on the concept of marriage. We dwell on it till um, the second Sunday in October. You know, we dwell on the, in the area of relationships. Avail yourselves of the teachings, both on Wednesday and on Sundays. So under the concept of marriage, let's talk of planning to get married. Planning to get married. Um, Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4 says, I'm reading for, from the New Living Translation. Okay, just stay on the New King James, please. 13 verse 4. Um, he says, yeah, give honor to marriage and remain faithful to one another in marriage. God will surely judge people who are immoral and those who commit adultery. Marriage is honorable among all, in every tribe, in all times, in all seasons. It's honorable. And the bed undefiled, but fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. And then we look at 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 14. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 14. He says, so I advise these younger widows to marry. So I advise these younger widows to marry, to marry again, have children, and take care of their own homes. Take care of their own homes. Then the enemy will not be able to say anything against them. Genesis 2, 18 to 24 And the Lord said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I make him a companion that will help him. I make him a companion who will help him. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And the Lord said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I make him a companion who will help him. Not who will pull him down. So the Lord found the Lord God formed from the soil every kind of animal and bird and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And Adam chose a name for each one. He gave names to all the livestock birds and wild animals. But still there was no companion suitable for him. So the Lord God caused Adam to fall into a sleep, a deep sleep. He took one of Adam's ribs and closed up the place from which he had taken it. Then the Lord made a woman from the rib and brought her to Adam. At last, at last, Adam exclaimed, she is part of my own flesh and bone. She will be called woman because she was taken out of a man. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother to be and is joined to his wife and the two are united into one. Now, although Adam and Eve, his wife, were both naked, neither of them felt any shame. Planning to get married or planning to marry. 
Proverbs 16, verse 9. Proverbs 16, verse 9. Proverbs 16, verse 9. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. A man's heart plans his way. You have to make the plans. You have to formulate some plan in your heart. Here I have, we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. But you must have some plan. And then, Proverbs 24, verses 3 and 4. A house is built by wisdom and becomes strong through good sense. A house is built by wisdom and becomes strong through good sense. Through knowledge, its rooms are filled with all sorts of precious riches and valuables. I like the way it reads in the New Living Translation, in the New Living Bible. It says, any enterprise is built by wise planning, becomes strong through common sense, and profits wonderfully by keeping abreast of the facts, updating yourself continuously. Marriage is a very weighty matter. The impact is massive and is generational. It's a weighty matter. It's not a light thing. So it deserves thorough consideration and planning to get it right. We have a lot of failures in marriage nowadays um, because people that are not prepared for marriage are getting married. Have baked Wives and husbands and mothers and fathers are becoming married people and becoming fathers and mothers. People that don't even know the basic rules of life. What it takes to live a normal, good Christian life or even normal societal life are getting married and having children. The divorce rate in America was soaring some years back, but it's decreasing now. And the reason is that people are becoming more careful in choosing a life partner before they get married. They're being more careful now. You must prepare for marriage. It's not everybody that must get married. It's not at one point you should get married. Everybody is doing it, so I have to do it. That's not enough reason. We solve at least five purposes. The key purpose is companionship. Somebody to compliment you. Mutual benefit. The other four reasons we, we showed last week. Purposes of marriage. According to the man that started it, the person that started it, God himself who instituted marriage and ordained it. He had a purpose in mind. If you play according to that purpose, you will have a blissful decision. But when anybody deviates from that purpose and begins to play a role or wants to uh, 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 arrogate to himself a role not assigned to him or her, then there will be disharmony. Once you shift from God's template, you will have disharmony and you have challenges. So find out what does God expect and play according to the book. And God will honor you. Lots of people get into marriage without adequate preparation. And so they learn everything on the job. You know what it means to learn on the job? Eh? So it will, it will be trial and error. And in the process, people are wounded, people are hurt. People are upset. There is so much disharmony. If you desire, desire to get married, prepare and plan for it. Trial and error may not get, get you what you want. It may not see you through. Or at least you will require more grace. 
The problem of most cities in Nigeria, including Lagos, where we live, is that they were not planned from the beginning. So, so everybody sells land and builds. And you sell land, you build, you build your own. You, everybody is building. You create a road, narrow, that, that is not suitable, that will not be suitable in the next five years. How come the whole of the island exists has one access road to it? Do you know there is one access to, only one access to Lagos? Assuming there is a stampede in Lagos and people have to flee, like during the Abiola crisis, 1993, right? You saw what happened on that road. So, if there were uh, cities, most of them, one of the best planned cities in Nigeria is Aba. They use the grid network to plan Aba. But even at that, at, I don't like living in that city. The people, the, many of the inhabitants are not planned in their mind. <laughs> But the, 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 the road network is well planned, at least the core I knew before. Are you hearing me? But it's not the same. It's here. So what happens, what we have going on now is act called action planning in town planning. Action planning. You've already built a city, and then you're seeing how to amend things. Okay, this, today, you will break all the buildings in this, in this area to create a road, to create a bridge. Action planning. Action planning. If you prepare for marriage, there will be less action planning to do while you are in it already. By failing to plan, you are planning to fail. By failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. It's not enough. You know, the pioneers sang a song in those days in the 80s or so. Everybody's moving, so I'm moving on. It's because everybody, bandwagon effect. Everybody is doing it, so it's the vogue. Everybody's moving, so I'm moving on. Everybody's moving, so I'm moving on. Because I see my destiny, destiny. But why you're moving is because every other person is moving. Bandwagon effect. It's not a reason to get into marriage. That is his joke. He says... If, if plan A didn't work, the alphabet has 25 more letters, so stay cool. <laughs> if plan A doesn't work, the alphabet still has 25, so stay cool. It's better you go for plan A. Go for plan A with all your heart. Find out what it is. Go for it. Anything you're having as plan B should be in case something goes wrong or that I didn't envisage. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? In marriage, go for plan A. It's not let me try it for six months. And don't joke with another person's life and destiny. God will not approve it. Don't make another person miserable in life just for marrying you. God will not approve it. If you want to get married, get married for the right reasons. So Proverbs, where we read, and they get back to Proverbs 24, verses 3 and 4 in the Living Bible. Get it in the Living Bible. Do you have the Living Bible there? Okay. It says again, any enterprise is built by wise planning, becomes strong through common sense. And profits wonderfully by keeping abreast of the facts. You keep updating. Make sure you're current. Keep studying. What am I doing? How can I improve on what I'm doing? Keep abreast of the facts. So, let's talk of preparation. If you're desiring, if you're desiring, let me tell you, let me tell you. You see, start your preparation now. You know, I, I was telling uh, during the Youth Expression Summit, I talked about pitfalls to avoid. Are you here? Are you here? You see this, those seven pitfalls? The answer to them when you are confronted by them is capital no. Don't even bother to pray or think about it. 
any of those. Any of those seven things I told you, when I told you that no is a complete sentence. Anytime you, they are presented to you, the answer is capital no. Don't bother praying or thinking about it. It will be an error to think about it. Okay, let me think about it. It will be an error. Capital no. That's part of your preparation for your future. So when you're planning to get married, there is necessary preparation to do. My grandmother, for instance, from an Anglican background, I was born into an Anglican family. My maternal grandmother, an Anglican, people, they were lodged somewhere. Girls were lodged somewhere by the church. They organized it in their act decking or whatever. And they were training them on marriage before they got married. Now, there's even if we preach it, it's like you're preaching to yourself. People will not listen to even counsel. You spend your time and energy giving them until it's late. Until it's late. And they are now faced with the consequences of their actions. Listen to me. You can always take whatever decision you want. But you can't determine the consequences. It's beyond your control. You can choose your way, but you can't determine the consequences. Because once you take that decision, a chain of events is triggered into motion. And you can't control all of them. All of them will not be within your control. So plan and plan according to the template of God. Prepare for marriage if you're going to get married. And if you're ready on it, then you may need to do some action planning. Even if you didn't get the foundation right, you have to work on it. In, in the building industry, there is something called un underpinning. Underpinning for a foundation that is faulty. You, say, you move around 6th Avenue, you see some buildings that are sinking. Some have lost their buildings. Like there was a building on 13th Road that is eventually demolished completely and removed. You won't even know the building was there before it was sinking. But in underpinning, what you do is, when a building begins to sink, you, you, there, there are technologies you can use to underpin it, go under and reinforce that foundation to stop it from sinking. Well, let me tell you one thing. They, uh, I don't know about now, but several years ago, it's only two companies I know, or one that had that technology in Nigeria. That's Panalpina. You know Panalpina? And it's very expensive. It's more expensive to underpin a foundation than to build the right foundation in the first place. Because you're paying for advanced technology. Now, are you desiring to get married? Plan for it. Are you in marriage as you move? Because some of us didn't know some of the things we know today. Then there is a need for action planning and midstream adjustments is, 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 is there for us. So I want to talk about four things that you must take care of in preparing to get married. Number one, there must be a determination in two directions. Determination is very important. In Isaiah 50 verse 7, the Bible says, For the Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be disgraced. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, determined to succeed. And I know I shall not be ashamed. So I have suffered shame in marriage. There must be a determination. Your face, face, your face set like a flint. If you have the New Living Translation, get it there. Determined to succeed. Because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a stone, determined to do his will. And I know that I will not be put to shame. There must be that determination 
One, to please God. To honor God in the union you're getting into, in the home you're about to set up. You must be determined to honor God. Whatever it is that will please him, I will do it. Are you here? Are you here? I will do it. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30, the B part, God said that those that honor me, I will honor. But those that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. If you play in a way that dishonors God, he will allow you to suffer shame and embarrassment. I will honor those who honor me and I will despise those who lightly think lightly of me. Number two, in the underdetermination, determine to succeed in your marriage. If you get into marriage with a half-hearted approach, let me see whether it will work or not. It's not going to work. Are you here? Because you will not pay the necessary price to make it work. Marriage, like ministry, spells hard work. You must be determined to succeed. That's what will enable you to put in everything you can to make it work. You have to give up to gain. You have to stoop to conquer. When you're determined to succeed. In 1 Corinthians 10, 31, we are told that in all that we do, we should do it to the glory of God. So that's number one. That determination. Amen? Are we together? Preparation. Number two, involve God early. Involve God early. John chapter 2 from verse 1. Let God come into the union right from the planning stage. From verse 1, the next day, Jesus' mother was guest at a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. Early, Jesus was honored by those people. They took time and invited him early. By the time you get to verse 2, there was already a problem right at that celebration. But Jesus was already seated on the scene. Are you here? In verse 3, and when they ran out of the wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. What if they didn't invite Jesus early? The Bible says, God says in his word that those that seek me early shall find me. Are you hearing me? Invite, give God a place of honor in that home early. It's not about, it's about pleasing him. Marriage is his idea. Seek the Lord early. In Jeremiah 29 verse 11, he says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans of peace and not of evil. To give you hope in your final outcome. Paraphrasing it. To give you a future and a hope. I know the plans. I have a plan. Follow my plan. Most people follow their plan. Their own plan. And make light of the plan of God, even his purpose. And it can work. 
Anything you take out of divine, divine order will suffer problems. It will wobble. God has a plan for that family. And it's necessary. You try to discover his plan continuously. Know what, that God has a purpose for this family. It's not what I think about money. What is his plan for my specific family? And then follow it and make sure you're playing according. Then you begin to build around that purpose. And that keeps you on focus. That determines your boundaries. If I know the purpose for my life, it determines a lot of boundaries for me. There are many people that cannot be my friends because of my mission in life. There are things I cannot do because of my purpose, my mission in life. Even legitimate things that I must not do. Are you here? Are you here? There are places I should not be found in because of who I am and where I'm going. It will give a wrong signal to somebody and hinder that person's faith. It determines your boundaries. The purpose of God. In Proverbs 8, 17, God said, I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. Early. Involve God. Early. Psalm 37 verse 5 says, Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Share your heart. Share your desire. Share your vision with him as your father. Discuss with him. Learn to discuss with God like you're sitting with a real person and talking to him. Father, I don't like the way this discussion went today. I don't like the way this service went today. Father, that service was good. What really, what, what, what made the difference? Discuss with him like a real person. Talk to him. Share your heart, your visions, your dreams, your hopes with him. Stop acting as if you can handle everything in life. You can't. You're limited. You're a man. You're limited. You're a man. You need God. It's only the fool that says in his heart that there is no God. And by the actions, they, they, they show you they don't believe there is any God. Except the Lord builds the house, the labor in vain who build it. So involve him. And right from the planning stage, involve him. Let him be your consultant. Number three, have a vision. Have a vision. You enter marriage, no vision. It's like going to school, no vision. There, you, before you enter the university, you didn't have in mind where you're going to, what you want to do in life. And so you took up any subject, let it be that I'm a graduate. And many people have undertaken studies in areas that have nothing to do with their destiny, add nothing to it, just to answer graduates. That's not according to plan. And so you end up coming out, you're not even employable because your, the course of study is not relevant to the demand of the industry now. Hallelujah. Are we together? Eh? Are you here? Have a vision. Proverbs 29 verse 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Some other translation says, where there is no redemptive revelation of God, the people cast off restraints. When you don't have a vision, you become loose and flabby in your oppressions. Anything goes. Pick on anything that comes. A vision streamlines you and focuses your energy and faculties. 
a vision unites your energies, puts them on target, gets them pointed. Why you desire to get married? Have a picture of where you're going and where you want to take your family to. Have a mental vision. The Holy Spirit works with dreams and visions. Where there is no vision, the people perish. And I've not seen a better vision caster than God. To take them out of the land of Egypt. He told them of another land that he's taking them to. And painted such a vivid, good picture of that land that they looked up, looked forward. Assuming God didn't paint that kind of picture of a better land. A land flowing with milk and honey. And so on. He said, out of whose brooks flows so and so. Out of whose mountains you can dig out iron and all precious things. He, he kept repeating it and taking it to a good land, a, a land flowing with milk. And they had a mental picture of a better tomorrow. You must have a mental picture of a better tomorrow for the family you're building or you're going to build. It must be better than what you have now. Have a vision to go with. If you don't have a picture of where you're going, you can't take anybody anywhere. Where are you going? Some people are strolling in life. Have you ever strolled? One evening, you say, let me just stroll. Uh, how many of us have ever strolled? Eh? When you're strolling, where are you going to? Eh? That's what happens when you move into anything in life without a vision, including marriage. You're just strolling. And so you can easily get distracted. Once you see a friend, that becomes your destination. Once a friend meets you, yeah. oh, oh, is this where you live? Ah, uh-uh. now wow, well, that becomes your destination. Because you had no where you were going to. Praise God. <laughs> it sounds funny, but it's not when you when, when these things are dealing with you. Start with a vision, a mental picture of a better tomorrow. If you're going nowhere, you can't take another person anywhere. You will bog down yourself and bog down the other person. Why do you want to get married when you can't, you have, you, you're not even in control of yourself? You can't manage yourself. You have no sense of direction. How will you take, where will you take that family to? Possess yourself first. Go with a vision. If possible, write it down, no matter how crude it is. Number four, prepare yourself for marriage in these areas. Prepare yourself. Why are you talking of marriage? It's not because every other person is married. Even if because of every other, every other person is married, you know there are purposes in mar- for marriage now. Play Focus on, look at those purposes. Seek to achieve them. If you don't understand the purpose of marriage, you won't even know when you have met the right person. What's this role is going, this person going to play? I don't know. And all your focus is wedding. Wedding is not the plan. Are you hearing me? Wedding is not the plan. After wedding, the marriage begins. So, young people focus all their energy on marriage, on wedding rather. Oh, you 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 want to? I I I want the engagement to be in a boat in the sea, or by by a waterfall. Or by a bridge, and I've seen engagement rings fall out from there as they are trying to put you are trying to put it on your bride's hand. I've seen them fall out of, of your hand in those places and fall into the water lost. 
I've seen engagement rings because you want your own to be different. Some people that will climb into a helicopter they've never been to before. You just engage. Just, and that's all their plan. Fantasy. Fairyland. By the time you finish engaging in the helicopter, you're going to land on the ground. And that's where marriage will be. <laughs> I've seen that they say to look different. Somebody will go to a, bri a wooden bridge. Water here, water here. And they will uh, surprise, surprise. He brings out the ring to put on her finger. The thing just slips. Ah! Yeah, it has fallen into the water. I've seen it. How many of you have seen it? Even waterfall, I've seen it. Wedding, engagement is not marriage. Wedding is not marriage. After the wedding day, you won't put on that wedding gown again. You will wear house dress to work on your marriage. <laughs> Prepare yourself now. Prepare yourself now in these areas. Number one, character. Character. We Pentecostals tend to emphasize power, the power of God, the anointing over character. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. So when the Holy Spirit controls our lives, he will produce this kind of fruit in us. Love, joy, peace. Many people are not peaceful. For no reason, for selfish reasons, they can start a war. No matter how you hurt the other person, you don't care. You never put yourself in the other person's position. If you love me, you will care for who I care for. Are you here? Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Here, there is no conflict with the law. The Bible says, against such, any of those, there is no law that is against any of those. Develop character. If you, if you can develop the fruit of the Spirit, you will have the character of Christ. And nobody can fault it. Cara, you see, many people take the place of character lightly in their journey to success. Billy Graham said something. He said, when, when wealth is lost, nothing is lost. When health is lost, something is lost. But when character is lost, all is lost. All is lost. A failure in character is a fatal failure. It's a deadly failure. So avoid those fatal flaws. I cry out to God to help you where you see flaws in your character. People will forgive your errors, but in the long run, people will not forgive your bad character. When the charm is gone. The charm of beauty and wealth is gone. All that will be left is character. And it will stick out like a sore thumb. Positive or negative. All that people will be seeing is character. At some age, when the charm of beauty and youthfulness is gone, all that will be left is character. And people may not like what they're seeing. And that's why you hear that a marriage of 47 years broke down. Somebody, a friend of mine, sent me a, 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 a link one time. A 96-year-old man, an Italian, a 99-year-old man is divorcing his wife of 96, uh, that is 96 years. 99-year-old divorcing 96-year-old wife. They've been married for 77 years. What happened? 60 years back, she had an affair. 
which the husband didn't know about. And the stupid woman, the letters they exchanged, she still had them in a cabinet somewhere. Just before Christmas last year, the husband was sorting out some things in that old cabinet and came across those things. And he said he was divorcing. And they are in court. Their children are not happy. But the man said, why keep such things? Why did the man have to find out himself? A failure in character is a loss of everything. The second area is maturity. Maturity. Prepare yourself. Be mature. It's not a function of age. There are babies that are married. Get mature. Grow up. Help me tell somebody, grow up some more. So that, so that you won't think I'm saying you've not grown up. Grow up some more. There's always room for growth. Tell somebody, grow up some more. And in talking about growth, go on your own. Read 1 Corinthians 13 from verse 4 to 8, that love chapter. Read it in the Amplified Bible. If you have one, you can easily have one or get it online. Read it, read it. Love is maturity. Love is maturity. It's not, love is not, you won't see there, uh, uh, love kisses, uh, they love every morning. <laughs> okay, let me not even... <laughs> <laughs> Let me not even. <laughs> In love, you must hold your hand when you're walking on the road. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you will not see it there. Love is what? Maturity. God is love. Let me leave that one there. Walk on your mind. You, have, you must prepare your mind for marriage. Some, some, some enter their husband's house, some enter into marriage, and they are not entering their way, their spirit, soul, and body. Prepare your mind. Look at Ruth, chapter 1, verses 15 and 17. Ruth. Where are thou? Where are his judges? Okay, Ruth. It says, 15 to 17, Naomi was appealing to his daughters-in-law to go back after their husbands died. Naomi's own husband. Three widows. Three widows under the same roof. Naomi's husband died, Abimelech. Chilon and uh, the, his brother died. So the two brothers died, and these, their two wives, were are now widows. Naomi wants to go back to Bethlehem, where she came from. She's telling them, go back to your people. They were Edomites. Go back to your people. She talked to them, reasoned with them. From verse 14. And again, they wept together. And Opa kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. Pium! And there she goes. But Ruth insisted on staying with Naomi. See, Naomi said to her, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. You should do the same. But Ruth replied, do not ask me to leave you and turn back. I go wherever you go. And live wherever you live. Your people will be my people. And your God will be my God. I will die where you die. And I will be buried there. May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. 
a mind prepared to stay the course. Prepared. No wonder God blessed that woman. Prepare your mind. Hey, somebody was, the psalmist was writing about Jezebel, you know, the daughter of Edba, king of Sidon, married to Ahab. He said, listen, if you want the king to love you, forget your father's house. Oh. Follow him, he's your lord. Oh. Forget all those things. You are, you, look at the way some people, you want to carry everything you're leaving behind. Not like Ruth. He can't walk. It can't work. Families come together, but it's not the way you want. You want to carry the idols you should leave behind into your new home. It will not help you. Count the cost like Ruth. Work on your mind. Number three, area of working on yourself. Your work or livelihood. Your work. Before God gave Adam a wife, he gave him occupation, dress the garden, keep it, cultivate the garden, and keep it, guard it, guard it. Genesis 2.15. Cultivate the garden, guard it. In Proverbs 24, verse 27, the Bible says, Develop your business first before building your house. Develop your business first before building your house. I can paraphrase it this way. He said, prepare your outside work. Make it fit for yourself in the field. And afterward, build your house. Have something doing before you, you're talking of marriage. Are you hearing me? Eh? Have something doing before you're talking of marriage. Before you talk of getting married. First, Peter, First Timothy 5, 8. He says, he who will not provide for his own, especially his immediate household, is, has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. That's the man. This, this is like pointed to the man now. Have a work. Have something. Have a means of livelihood. Before you go to somebody's house and say, I won't marry your daughter. You're telling me, I found this girl. Is your name Samson? If somebody's paying your school fees, then don't talk of marriage. If you come to me about marriage, I will kill you. So you see, your mom is still paying your school fees. Your daddy is still paying your school fees. You're telling me, I found this girl. Is your name Samson? Even if your son, <laughs> if your mom brings you, if, if anybody brings you to you, I claim you first to bring you back to your senses. For the woman, the same. Look at Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. Quickly, I have to. Um, okay, quickly. I think we will. Proverbs 31. Let me pick a few verses there. Let me read 10 to 19. For the woman, God told Adam when he was talking of marriage, I give you a helper suitable for you. Somebody say helper, not a destroyer, not a quarrel mate, not a strife mate, not a rival, not a competitor. Not a competitor. I send you somebody that will help you. From verse 10. Who can find a virtuous and capable wife? She's worth more than precious rubies. Her husband can trust her. And she will greatly enrich his life. Virtuous woman, bringing value to the table. Not a liability, bringing value to the table. She will 
greatly enrich his life. Verse 12, she will not hinder him, but help him all her life. She finds wool and flax and busily spins it. She walks like the husband walks. Unless when you're very comfortable and you feel, okay, fine. You can cease from this now, but even at that, there are things you need to do to keep your creative energies running. She finds wool and flax and busily spins them. She's like a merchant sheep. She brings her food from, far, from afar. She gets up before dawn to prepare breakfast for her household and plan the day's work for her servant girls. Nowadays, women are not even training their children to cook. And she's about to get married. He said, hey, hey, hey. It's equality. The man can cook now. One, one deaconess in those days, she told me one day, she said, she said, uh, the, she said that, the, she gave me a proverb. She said, uh, the soup, where my papa cooked the sweet, where we said, no, be better testimony. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Say the cook, the food, the soup where my papa cooked the sweet well well. Say no be better testimony. Man and woman ought to know how to cook. I can cook stew, I can cook soup, I can boil rice, I can cook. Some of you only what, what the only thing you know to cook is indomie. And you'll be on your phone and the indomie bones. You're preparing your daughter for marriage. Does she know how to cook? The husband will be eating outside. That's how the doors get opened. You're taking things for granted. She should know it before she gets married. You know, a, cousin, a friend of mine, when we were in school, was telling me that the, the cousin was dating a girl to marry her. And then every day he visits this girl. The girl we asked him, do you want to eat bread? He got her bread. He said every day. He said, and I saw him cause he said, so if I marry this girl, and I saw every day I go, you got her bread, you got her That's how the guy withdrew. He got her bread. Help me ask somebody, he got her bread. <laughs> you go chop bread. That's how the, the engagement broke, broke up. Who wants to marry somebody that can't cook a meal? You come home and you're looking for what to eat. And he said, hey, so if I came back to you, shut up. That's not the way. You're not playing the role of a helpmeet. And me, sir, if I walk to. He got that bread. Uh -huh. Verse 24. Have we read up to verse 19? Uh -huh. 15. Okay, let's read on. Now, you, know, you see, a lot of times women organize programs, the virtuous woman. Take the whole thing the virtuous woman does. Not the one that suits your occasion. Take the whole thing. Play the book. All in favor, say yes. She gets up before dawn to prepare breakfast for her household and plan the day's work for her seven girls. She goes out to inspect a field and buys it. With her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She's energetic and strong, a hard worker. She watches for bargains. Her life's born into the night. Her hands are busy spinning thread. She fingers twisting fiber. And she's generous, extending helping hands to those that are in need. Verse 24, she makes belted linen garments and sashes to sell to the merchants. And sashes to sell to the merchants. Verse 30, charm is deceitful. It will, it will eventually go. The charm will cease. Beauty will fade. Charm is deceitful or deceptive. And beauty does not last. But a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. Reward her for all she has done. Let her this publicly declare her praise. Men and women, prepare yourself in work. Are you hearing me? Everybody should contribute to the well-being of the family. Sometimes, people allow their husbands to die untimely. 
in some areas, people allow their, in the north, they labor the women. The women will be there laboring in the farms. The men will be under trees near the marketplace drinking fura de nono. I've lived in the north. The women bring back those produce from the farm and sell it, and the men collect the money. It's not right. Everyone should be contributing to keep the family afloat and moving. Are you hearing me? It's not the man's duty alone. You've read the Bible. It's not the wife's duty alone. Let's work together. The benefit of synergy. If not, somebody will be, and you know where anybody, everybody here is an adult, you know where you're being cheated. Where are we? Now, for number four, in the areas of preparing yourself, domestic things. Prepare yourself in domestic things. How to do things in the house. Titus chapter 2, verses 4 and, 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 and 5. Titus 2, 4 and 5. Are you there? Titus. These older women must train the younger women. Train the rangers. Train the young people. Train your children. Older women must train the younger women. To love their husbands and their children. To live wisely and be pure. To take care of their homes. To do good and to be submissive to their husbands. To be discreet, chest, homemakers. Homemakers. Somebody was complaining from the U.S., if you come to the house, the, house, the wife don't nearly drive him out of the house. With the thing. She keeps buying things that she doesn't... Everywhere, it's like a warehouse where they live. The man is choked. She won't get rid of any. She won't sell any. She's just packing things, hoarding things in the house. And the man is just waiting for the last child to come out of school. He, he wants to bolt out of the marriage. You can't keep the house. The toilet will not be clean. Your kitchen will not be clean. The bedroom, everything is scattered. It's wrong. Look at what God says we should do. Women, women, look at what God said. Some, some of us, our bedrooms, nobody can enter there. Socks, the, socks that has not been washed since the, the, the Garden of Eden is, is, is there. Is there. And you're still wearing it and you smell it. You open the door, you smell it. And the wife won't tell her, oh God, I will put this thing in the dustbin. No. She won't wash it. It's, it's, it's normal to be untidy. Everything is scattered. Your bedroom. How do you think creatively? This thing broke down your mind. How can you think creatively in a junkyard? To be domestic. Train the young women to be domestic, to know how to cook. To know how to take care of the house. Train them. Eh? I have my children. It's not like in those days. You, you, some of us are just too selfish for, 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 for things to run. Too selfish. Number five. The last area of preparing yourself. Prepare your body. Prepare your body. You can't leave your body anyhow. Yakata. Every, you're just, all your concern is painting your face, women. Painting your face. Until we can't recognize you. Let me tell you the truth. Do you want me to tell you the truth? Men are not interested in those painted faces. They are interested in natural beauty. I'm a man, I'm telling you the truth. We know that's not clear. We know that's fake. It doesn't appeal to, ask the men, ask any man. Those things don't appeal to us. We know when you're fake. Just like you know when a man is fake and he's just posing. <laughs> okay? You know when a man is fake, Abby. You can know it. We know when you people are fake. And listen, preparing to get married, and you're, we will talk, uh, the next time we're talking about looking for a wife or a spouse or a partner, how to go about it. It doesn't belong to this day. But nowadays, what you, what you get... What you see is not what you get at the end of the day. So shine your eye. If you're going, they said there in my village in those days, if you want to find a beautiful wife, say look for a wife in the Hamatan season. 
That's when you know the ones that have scales on their body and they do. They told that they will know the worst this person can look. Say that for Hamatan. The worst case scenario you see in Hamatan. It's like, it's like when you, some of us want to rent a house in Lagos. You got to rent a house in Hamatan. And then when rents come, you find out the house is flooded. <laughs> Praise God. You know? So, he, he, in these days, okay, let's leave that for, for, for when you're looking for a wife. But, but listen, prepare your body. Not everybody is slim, slim feet. People can be plump, but don't allow yourself to get fat. It's not healthy. It's not attractive. You can be plump, but even when you're plump, make sure your body is firm. Male and female. The, the, the era of pot bellied chief executives is over. It's not in vogue. Trim your tummy. Men, trim your tummy. Trim your tummy. How do they even embrace your wife? <laughs> Thought this tummy is your carrying. <laughs> Owen has come again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All things are possible. Okay. <laughs> You'll be quoting Bible where you want to embrace your wife. All things are possible. God, help me. Grace, your grace is sufficient for me. <laughs> work, work on your body. Not just applying pain. Work on your body. Finally, Brethren, find the person, find the right person, find the right person. Proverbs 18, 22, he that finds a wife, finds a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. Is he not? Is he not? Proverbs 19, 14, parents can provide their sons with an inheritance of houses and wealth, but only the Lord can give an, understand, uh, can give an understanding wife. Seek the guidance of God. Prepare as you prepare. As you prepare. So next time, as you prepare, sure, looking for the right person, seek to be the right person. And these preparations are the ways you can position yourself to be right, the right person. Are you hearing me? Eh? While you're looking for the right person, be the right person for that person too. And these preparations will help you to be the right person. So next time, we are, by God's grace, we are dealing with how to go about seeking. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Possible to use the online options. Our account details are displayed on the screen. Hallelujah. All right, if you have packaged your offerings, you've done your transfers, just stand and let's pray. Let's present our offerings to God. Lift, lift up your offering or your instrument of transfer. Father, we thank you. Thank you, O oh God, for your presence with us here today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for instructing us according to your path and according to your purpose for us. With our offerings today, we worship you. We thank you for bringing us this far. We thank you for your goodness and mercy in our lives, in our families, in the things that we do. We thank you, O oh God. Even for our children, we thank you. With these offerings, we declare, O oh God, that our trust and dependence is in you. Have your way, O oh God. Help us all the way. Help us like you have helped us from January till this moment. Help us till the end of the year and beyond. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.